Welcome to the next episode in Forging a Viking Broadsex. If you have watched the previous episodes, you know that my last few attempts in creating the sex failed miserably. I am now back to the part where I created a hundred or so layer billet for the cutting edge that needs to be forged out. I am doing this on the power hammer with drawing dice which allow me to quickly elongate the billet. As I have said before, since I'm creating a broad sax, I need to create a fairly wide edge billet. My billet consists of W2, a high carbon tool steel, and some wrought iron for a total carbon content of roughly 0.7%. With all the drawing, I need to be careful that none of the welds come open. Even with a power hammer, the drawing operation takes time. My technique with a power hammer is to mount spacers that allow me to reduce the stock to the thickness of the spacer. I then forge the billet to square and reduce the size of the spacer. Eventually, I will have worked myself down to half an inch or about 12.7 millimeters. My final spacer is going to be 3 eighths of an inch or 9 mm. I will use this spacer only to widen the billet, as I want to use the white part as my cutting edge. After a lot of work, I sometimes give the steel a rest and let it cool down. That gives me a little rest as well. I am now at the final dimension of the billet and will forge it flat on one side to widen it as I had mentioned before. Since I had to start over with everything again, I have already twisted my pattern welded bars and forge welded them to a mild steel bar that will form the back of the sword. This core billet is what I'm cleaning up on the belt sander now. The cutting edge and this core billet need to have squared up sides to ensure successful welding. To help with that, I verified that my tool rest and platen at the 90 degree angle. Given all my recent failures, I decided to forge weld the test piece first. I took four square bars, drew them up on the belt sander and am now trying to weld them together in the forge. This is a good preparation for the final welding step of the sax. It allows me to test the atmosphere in my forge and also the squareness of my bars. As usual, I protect the welds by applying anhydrous borax as a flux. The borax is liquid at welding temperatures and creates a glassy coat around all the bars to keep the oxygen away. So far it looks pretty good. The liquid borax is nicely spraying away as the power hammer forces the bars together. On a side note, I have color graded this video in high dynamic range and if you have a display that supports HDR10, the hot steel should really pop out on your screen. I have finished all the forge welding now and am using the rubber wheel on my belt sander to create a completely flat surface. This will be a good test to see if my welding was successful. I am also cutting off one of the ends to inspect the welds there as well. As you may be able to see, everything looks quite good. With that successful experiment under my belt, let's go back to the sacks. 
I now have the cutting edge and the core and need to mesh them together. As it turns out, they don't quite fit. To correct that, I'm tack welding the bars together at each end and will use the flat die on the power hammer to make them match. At least, that's the plan. This is not something I've done before, but in this case I want to overdetermine success. I hope it's going to work out. As you may be able to see on the video, there is quite a big gap, and even with a lot of clamping pressure, I was not able to work it out. After a few passes on the power hammer, I am happy with the results and will now separate the bars from each other. Since both bars have been exposed to heat, there is scale that I need to remove before I can forge weld. Now everything is prepared for me to clamp the bars together and tack weld them. I also place very small tack welds on the surface with the full expectation that they will be completely ground out later. As you can see, everything is fitting together nicely. Hopefully that also means that forge welding proceeds without any trouble. Given the previous failures, there is a certain degree of anxiety. Will it come together, or will I have wasted another 30 hours? So far it looks quite promising and I have a good feeling about it. I think it all came together successfully. I will now heat up the welded bars to critical temperature and then let them cool down in the air to normalize them. At the moment this looks quite ugly. Before I do any further forging, I will grind down the surface until it is completely flat and all signs of welding have disappeared. With the fresh belt on the belt sander, this happens quite quickly. If you remember from before, the next step is to cut in a reverse tip that I will then forge over. The reason to start with the reverse tip is to maintain the pattern flow. The cutoff piece will also allow me to inspect the welds. In this particular case, I will also stress test them to get an idea on how strong they are. 
Once I manage to separate them, we can also take a look at the contact surface. The shiny parts were welded and the dark parts were not. This is not a cause of concern though, because I already knew that close to the tack weld there was a gap that would not close up. Finally, it's time to forge the sword tip. Deja vu, here I come. In this particular case, I'm forging the tip over very lightly. The forging creates a lot of stress on the welds, and I really don't want them to open back up. That said, I'm quite happy since everything seems to be holding up and I seem to be back on track with this project. As always, if you enjoy these kind of videos, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. If you're not caught up on my videos, you may enjoy the previous one where I demonstrated how to 3D scan an old asset and then 3D print it. If you have any questions about these videos, please post a comment and I will do my best to get back to you. As always, thanks to everyone who has joined me on Patreon. As an extra perk, I will make my 3D scans available there as a reward. See you next time.